I usually stay away from topics that ruffle my feathers because I created this channel to promote peace primarily. However, I do want to talk about something that I think requires more accountability in our day and age, and that is ghosting. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Sama, and welcome to Mediocre Guidance. So if you don't know what ghosting is, it is when somebody who you have previously formed a connection with basically drops off the radar and goes completely MIA when you're trying to get in touch with them, and they don't respond to your messages or your phone calls or whatever. And that is because they are avoiding you in an effort to sever the connection. They no longer want to be in your life or have you in theirs. And so they just, instead of talking to you about it, they will just disappear. Hence the word ghost in <laughs> ghosting. This can happen in platonic relationships, such as friendships, not just, uh, romantically, but I think it's most prevalent in the dating scene, especially in the online dating scene. And I think it's a reflection of the extreme shortage of empathy <laughs> uh, when it comes to anything where there's a computer screen or, you know, like a phone screen blocking you and the other person. I'm old enough that I went through uh, quite a large portion of my elementary school pre-internet. And I remember when I was younger, basically up until grade six, I was very terribly bullied by uh, this group of girls and it was emotional bullying more so than physical. However, I remember like as we were getting older and maturing as children, um, a lot of my bullies really backed off and I even had one friend who used to associate with that group of girls. She came up to me and she apologized as a child. Like we're talking about like 11, 12 year old kids here. And she apologized to me because she had seen the toll that bullying had taken on me. I think that's where empathy is built is when you see the consequences of your actions in the other person and in, in the victim essentially and um, we're lacking that today i think because of technology and we can type whatever we want a lot of times anonymously we can post whatever we want about other people when there's absolutely no non-verbal cues to go off of it can really stunt our empathy as we're growing up um, and even in our adult relationships, right? So I think like the concept of not having enough empathy can definitely extend to like worse situations like cyberbullying, which can end up in like devastating consequences. But today I'm going to talk about the more, um, <laughs> I guess, toned down version of a lack of empathy. And that is with ghosting. Uh, I just find ghosting to be absolutely infuriating, um, especially when it's occurring between like grown ass men and women. Um, I don't know why people shy away from difficult conversations. Truly, it just annoys me. <laughs> I have been ghosted several times in my life, um, not just in like romantic situations, but also with like within friendships where I have developed an emotional intimacy even though it's platonic. Um, and in either case, I have to sneeze. Yeah! Excuse me. I have also had opportunities to ghost, and I don't know if it's because, I don't know, I was just raised to communicate properly, or um, I just have the empathy within me to not leave people hanging on a string. I have always, instead of ghosting, just had a conversation with the person. And Yes, I have had to deal with the aftermath of that and the subsequent falling out and, and you know, like the negative backlash of letting somebody down and, and telling them that I don't want to continue that connection. And I'm just going to be straight up here. I think ghosting is an act of cowardice. <laughs> I think that it does take courage to have a conversation with someone to let them know that they're being rejected. I think the reason people ghost is that they don't want to have to deal with the emotions that come with cutting ties with someone. They don't want to have to deal with the anger, the hurt, the upset, or else they just felt the connection wasn't strong enough to begin with. Like they just feel like they're not emotionally invested enough to like care about the other person's reaction. Of course, 
there is some nuance as to like when ghosting is appropriate. I do think ghosting is okay if uh, it, it's like a really new relationship where like there's been absolutely no real connection. Although in that case, I still think it's a polite thing to do <laughs> to um, communicate your desire to end the relationship there, the acquaintanceship, or else if the other person is being abusive or threatening or harassing you, then yes, of course, you know, cut ties, get away from them as quickly as possible. Another instance where I think ghosting is okay is if you have already communicated your boundaries and the other person is not respecting them, then in that case, sure, you know, let's go no contact. But besides those exceptions, <laughs> please do not ghost people because it is very disrespectful. What happens when you ghost someone is that you are stripping them of their dignity. Not only are you not providing closure, you're basically saying that they are not valuable enough to even get a response from you. I don't care if you think the person is coming on too strong or you're just not on the same page in terms of how much you want to invest further into the relationship. Respect and dignity are basic human rights. And so truly, it's just a matter of building up the courage to let somebody down, right? It really blows my mind that people are not willing to do this. Like you're hurting that person regardless you know, but what you're doing when you go no contact without explaining yourself is that you leave so many question marks with this person. And as someone who has been ghosted, as the ghostee, I can tell you that when there is no closure, when we don't know the reason why we've been ghosted, it creates so many different scenarios in our mind as to what could have gone wrong. I don't know, maybe I did come on too strong, or maybe you didn't enjoy my company as much as you thought you would. On the other hand, you might have been gotten hit by a bus. How am I supposed to know? Usually, <laughs> uh, the human tendency is to internalize, right, and to blame ourselves. And even if it is something that I did wrong, how can I learn from that and learn to be more considerate going forward in relationships? or to even know what my weaknesses are in a relationship if you don't tell me. I need to know the reason so that I can work on it and be better, right, in my future connections. And you are depriving me of that by ghosting me. And yes, it does require courage to sit someone down and talk to them, but no matter how negative the reaction is immediately after, I promise you that in the long run, you will gain the respect <laughs> of the person who you have like rejected or ended things with. When I was 18, I had my very first boyfriend <laughs> um it was my first time like dating anyone and of course i was so young and naive i did not have any experience before that being in a romantic relationship it did end and i am so forever grateful for my ex because he sat me down in person i remember we were at a park we sat down at a park bench and he broke up with me and i was like snot bawling like I was very very upset and it took me a long time to get over that relationship because you know like your first love is always the hardest to <laughs> like get past when things end but I am so grateful in hindsight that he had the emotional maturity to sit me down knowing that it would likely just be a disaster <laughs> in terms of like the emotional upheaval. And so I'm very grateful that he did that, even though it was probably very difficult for him and it probably took a lot of courage. Um, I, I remember he was crying too because he, he could see, visibly see <laughs> how hurt and heartbroken I was, but he did that. And so I have a tremendous amount of respect for him when I think back on that memory, even though it was a painful one for me. And then about a couple years later, I dated another gentleman and this was probably like my first experience with ghosting. Um, so we were like 19, 20 and he had met my parents. He had met my close friends at my birthday party. He would like come over to have dinner with my family pretty often. So obviously that emotional connection had been built. So it was Valentine's Day, <laughs> um, a few months into our relationship. And I remember I had like set up this whole day for us. So I, like, I was super excited, but I just wasn't hearing from him. Like I didn't know what the heck was going on. And so I went to the place he was staying cause this was in university. Uh, we were university classmates. And so I went to his, like the house that he was renting or whatever. 
And his roommate answered the door and said that he had literally booked it. Like he had just gone back to his hometown, which was a few hours drive away. And I was totally crushed and like very confused. I was like, oh, that's a weird thing to do on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Even he, like, although I think it was really shitty what he did, he really shouldn't have just abandoned me like that without any forewarning. However, when I reached out to him in my text, this like young 19 year old man had the decency to text me back and say, hey, I don't think we're on the same page. Um, turns out his uncle convinced him not to date me because he was a Christian, came from a Christian family and I was a non-Christian. So that, that was the reason behind it. But anyways, the point being that if a young man, a teenage hot blooded hormonal boy <laughs> can do this, can um, figure out a way to communicate why things are ending, Everyone can do this, okay? Men, women, you can do this. Please stop ghosting, it's very mean. <laughs> it's not a nice behavior. So if you have been ghosted, let me tell you something, okay? I know it sucks and I, I think it's rude, I really do. However, I want you to consider this a blessing because the person who ghosted you has shown you their true colors. And I think it is a real reflection of somebody's character as to how they deal with difficult situations. If this person didn't give you the time of day to explain the reasoning, then guess what? They have just proven to you that they are lacking empathy when it comes to like conflict resolution and just being properly communicative with you. And you don't want someone like that in your life. You don't want someone who devalues you and doesn't think that you're worthy of any answers. So consider this um, a bullet dodged <laughs> and that you deserve people who love you and respect you and really are interested in communicating with you through the good and the bad, right? Um, and so if you have been ghosted by someone, they have automatically disqualified themselves from being a significant part of your life. Thank you for listening to me rant about this. I don't know why this came to the top of my head to discuss. I just like find it really annoying when people don't communicate properly. Relationships are built on communication and whether that's, you know, someone you've just met or someone you've known for a long time, I think it is just decent manners to communicate with someone um, how you're feeling and what your intentions are. And um, I think we should hold people accountable for that because it's important. It's an important skill to have and learn as we navigate through life, which can be very stressful as it is. So as much as I sounded like a judgmental biatch in this video, <laughs> um, next time we are going to discuss why we really shouldn't judge people like this <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. Until then, I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Hello again. <laughs> I was discussing ghosting with a very good friend of mine and he's very spiritually wise and he brought up a point that I thought was pretty insightful so I thought I would include it as a follow-up to this video. He mentioned to me that if someone suddenly exits your life uh, it could also just be God's way of removing that person either as protection or perhaps that relationship is just no longer serving you in your greatest interest. And I thought that was very interesting because I do believe that everything happens for the best. I know it can be painful if somebody exits your life that suddenly, it's like God ripping a bandage off as quickly as possible. But I thought that was a point of interest and a wonderful perspective on how to process that experience so that you can take something good out of it. I don't know if you can see my cat here. She clearly thinks it's worth mentioning with her deep stare into my soul. My friend also brought up, and I thought this was very important, is that someone may ghost you for reasons that are beyond your knowledge, that are pretty significant to them, and so they just get completely thrown off track. My video is under the assumption that the person ghosting is doing it because they just don't want to do something uncomfortable. <laughs> but it is very possible that someone can also cut ties because there's just something more pressing in their lives that needs to be dealt with and they're going through a hard time. So we should definitely have compassion for people in that sense as well. Sorry the lighting has been whacked in this section. I just threw it together. <laughs> okay, goodbye. I will see you next time.